Hi, my name is Bradley Dilger. I'm a Crow researcher from Purdue University. Today, I will offer some advice about ethical corpus building. This video is part of a series our team has created to help you build your own corpus. For the whole series, please visit our YouTube channel at rightcrow.org slash YouTube. This video will offer seven suggestions for collaborating with others at your institution to ensure participants' rights are respected and data is shared responsibly. You can see them on the screen here, and they are in the description of this video, too. What we're sharing is specific to corpus and repository building. Once you've decided to build a corpus, you'll need to figure out how you're going to collect the data for your corpus. In some cases, you may be collecting publicly available data, such as writing posts on the web. But if not, you'll need to get approval from your institution's IRB or ethics board. We've secured this approval across several institutions, and our experience suggests planning and cooperation can make this work much easier. First, if you're gathering existing data, such as student work from classes, check to see if your institution allows an opt-out or requires an opt-in policy for gathering this type of data. Opt-out means that you can collect data from the source, such as from course management systems, without a signed consent form. You do still need to contact the participants to let them know you are gathering their data and offer them the option to opt out and keep their data out of your corpus. Opt-in, on the other hand, means that you will need to have a signed consent form or online agreement in order to collect the data. Generally speaking, opt-in approaches are more labor-intensive and can reduce participation rates, so plan accordingly. Now for our second point, which is working closely with your IRB or ethics board. You'll be doing this regardless of your approach to getting participants' permission to use their work. Think of the IRB as partners who help you treat research participants ethically, not enforcers of regulations. IRB staffers are often eager to sit down with researchers to make the process of obtaining approvals mutually easier. Conversations with IRB consultants can help you find local resources for help, too. Third, work closely with administrators. You simply have to get their buy-in. Administrators usually require some type of approval for data to be collected within an existing program. For example, the University of Arizona Writing Program requires that all investigators submit their IRB-approved protocol, as well as a shortened narrative summary of their research, before gathering data from writing program classes. Administrators can also grant access to teacher meetings, such as orientations or beginning of semester meetings, where you can discuss the project with instructors. Working with administrators can make things much easier. For example, Northern Arizona University asks all students to sign a blanket consent form for using drafts of papers for research. We suggest reaching out to program administrators early in the process and not only asking for their permission, but their feedback about your research. Offer to share your findings and seek ways to give back to them to recognize their help. Fourth, plan to work closely with instructors, too. Again, this is absolutely essential. Crow researchers don't collect data directly from students. Instead, we ask for help from instructors who grant us access to their classes to recruit students or offer access to the assignments students submit through course management systems or other platforms like Google Docs. We then collaborate with instructors to share opt-in or opt-out materials with students. Without their support, our project would not be successful. So make sure you're ready to answer questions from instructors and imagine them as partners too. Small incentives can help recognize their contributions to your project. Fifth, you may want to collect metadata, demographic information about your participants, so you can search in your corpus by first language or major, for example. This data is merged with texts in the corpus building process. We'll talk about that soon. Anyway, there are several ways you might consider collecting demographic data. One option is to create a survey. This option obviously gives you the most flexibility to collect the data you want to gather about your participants. However, the downside is, without incentives, survey participation will likely be very low. We use a survey for some Crow participants. We also request data directly from each institution's registrar or institutional research office. These offices typically collect information like students' country of origin and test scores. They may or may not collect data about the students' first languages. 
For either method, you will need to include demographic data as a separate type of data in your IRB application. If you choose to seek data from your institution, you will most likely need to request a data sharing agreement from them, often at the same time you complete the IRB approval process. Sixth, if you want to share your corpus beyond your own research team, make that clear as you request IRB approval. In addition, you will need to inform participants that you plan to share the corpus and how you plan to share it. You'll need to think about this very carefully. The Crow team has invested considerable energy in creating a user agreement and processes to ensure our corpus is not accidentally shared. Obviously, participants' ability to control their own writing is important to us, and we would hate to see unscrupulous paper mills benefit from our work. For most IRBs, once data has been fully de-identified, it is no longer human subjects data and can be more freely shared with other researchers. Finally, make sure you have a place to store your corpus data securely. Most institutions provide password-protected drives on servers that are backed up frequently. Using such a server will satisfy institutional requirements to protect human subjects' data. Using online storage also reduces the likelihood of losing data due to failures or human error. If you plan ahead, IT providers can recover data if it is lost or accidentally deleted. Plan how you will process data and get in the habit of being systematic about handling data, including consent forms, if you are required to use them. Overall, ethical writing research requires working with multiple partners. The success of Crow's writing research is only possible because of the relationships we've built with our participants and other stakeholders. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please visit our website, writecrow.org, to learn more about the Corpus and Repository of Writing, including links to other writing research resources we've built. Thanks again.